Hi again guys, welcome to another episode. We're up to episode 5 and we're going to talk about exercise again. And in light of what's happened recently in the UK, we have another enforced national lockdown. I will be exclusively working out in the garage. So I thought I'd show you my setup that I have at home that I use to stay fit and show you a bit of a tour but this video is mainly to show you a warm-up that I would do in the garage. Now this was filmed a few weeks ago when it wasn't pelting down with rain and uh, we had a little bit of sunshine so you'll note that I'm in a pair of shorts and all the garage doors are open but without further ado let's talk about exercise. This is basically the warm-up I do regardless of where I train at home or at the gym. It's a dynamic warm-up stretch which involves me starting with um, some shoulder rotations just to warm up the smaller complex muscles of my shoulder. Although I look like someone slightly special trying to swim in midair, what he's doing is getting the blood all to the, the shoulders. I'll do this about 20 times forward and backwards to begin with. And then off the back of that, what I do is another peculiar shoulder rotation exercise, but this time with smaller circles and focusing mostly on my upper back and traps just to get some warmth in there, some blood in there uh, and some crucial um, heat in that area. And then I go straight into this movement. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but what I'm doing is getting a dynamic stretch and contraction on my chest as well as my upper back. I rotate my hands and thumbs outwards to get some crucial external rotation in my shoulders whilst warming up. And I would do this about 20 times each side, trying to minimize rotation in my upper body and let my shoulders do the work. The next thing I then move straight on to is some lower body dynamic movement. So the first thing I do is I'm raising my knee up to my chest and kicking it back out behind me and this will get some blood and movement into my hip flexors, my glutes, my groin, uh, my quads and a little bit of my hamstrings but I do move on to that in a minute. You can do this holding on to something like I am or do it freestanding to get a little bit more of a challenge. I'll do this about 20 swings each leg uh, before I then move on to the next movement. And the next movement here is very similar to the last. I've switched back to the first leg, except this time, rather than bringing my knee to my chest, I'm bringing my toe out as far as I can. And I use my hand as a guide to get the uh, reference point. And what I'm doing here is by swinging the leg up and pushing it back, I get a bit of more of a stretch on my hamstring. And I don't do this straight away because they're not always warm enough and they do feel really tight and this isn't possible. But once again, I would do about 20 on one leg and I switch straight to the other one. And all of these movements, by the way, are back to back without any rest. So it's crucial that you're gaining momentum, gaining heat and, and getting yourself prepared and warm for your workout. Now, it's worth mentioning here that it was a particularly warm day and I've normally got a lot more layers on, at least a pair of jogging bottoms and a fleecy top on top of this, which I don't take off until I'm thoroughly warm before my workout. Um, and what I try to do if I'm not warm, even before this dynamic warm up, I'll definitely do some skipping, some star jumps, some cycling or something to get my heart rate up and me perspiring a little bit ahead of the workout. Straight after the leg swings, I then go into a warm-up movement for my posterior chain, which is my hamstrings, my glutes, my calves, and my lower back. And essentially what it is, is a, a simulated bodyweight deadlift. It's called a hip hinge, which is I run my hands down my thighs parallel until my hands reach my knees, and then I slightly bend my knees and I bring my hips back. It's crucial to learn this movement if you are to do any squats or deadlifts or any bodyweight rows. I would do this for about 20 reps. Again, there's a pattern here you can see. And what I'm doing at the top is squeezing my glutes together. So I'm not pushing my hips forward. I'm letting my glutes do the work to straighten out my hips and lower back. So I'm not thrusting forward, just squeezing the glutes and then feeling the stretch at the lower part of the movement in my hamstrings. 
And straight after that, I then move on to a body weight squat, which is a movement pattern that most of you will be familiar with. It allows me to further warm up and stretch my glutes, my quads, my inner thighs, my outer thighs, and my ankles. And here I'm focusing on sitting back in the movement whilst keep, keeping my heels on the floor. I do this, uh, as you can see, in quick succession for about another 20 reps. And the goal here with all of this dynamic movement is to not overwork yourself but just get your blood pumping and your body temperature rising so you're prepared for the core um, meat of your workout. I then go straight into some rotations of my ankles. A lot of the badminton and squash I've played over the years have taken its toll so I like to make sure that both ankles are thoroughly warmed up and I allow again the blood um, to flow through the ankles by rolling them, rotating them just uh, left and right each time and like I said earlier if I don't feel sufficiently warmed up I normally add a little extra work just to get my heart rate and t body temperature up that will either be some skipping some running or in this instance I'm just doing some jumping jacks or star jumps whatever you want to call them and it's a great little exercise because you don't need any equipment and you can do it with a very limited space I would probably do about 50 reps in total here. You don't want to overwork yourself, you're just uh, warming yourself up, remember. And so the penultimate movement I do here is a dynamic movement for my groin and my hamstrings. I knew in this workout that I'd be doing some deadlifts, so I paid particular attention to my hamstrings. So what I'm doing here is pivoting on my front foot, on the heel, and then to a flat foot position, which allows me to open up the groin when my knee is bent, and then in the straight leg position, gives me a bit of a stretch through the hamstring. I do about eight reps on each leg, not overworking it, just making sure that my hamstrings were indeed warmed up and particularly limber. And so the final movement pattern I do is one that is particularly important for those of us that spend most of our day hunched over a desk at a keyboard. It is essentially a movement that allows some rotation in the upper part of your back called your thoracic spine. And what I'm doing here is I've got an outstretched knee which I support with the hand on the same side of my body. I then thread the hand down and through under the leg and as I rotate it back upwards I use my eyes to follow the hand up to the sky and as you can see as I do this on the other side of my body what that does is allows the upper back to rotate freely and what usually happens almost every time I do this is a very satisfying few clicks through the spine releasing the tension which is important when we overhead press or bench press to allow the shoulders and upper back to sit and form in a correct and natural posture. Once again though, not overdoing it, eight reps each side here. By this point in the routine, I'm usually sufficiently warmed up and I don't wanna expel or waste too much energy. And at this point, I'm ready to start the workout. And you're probably thinking, well, that was a long warm up, but the way I look at warm ups are, you could really easily hurt yourself if you didn't do a warm up and it could put you out for several weeks, maybe even months, if you injure something seriously. So what's better to spend 10 to 15 minutes warming up each time before a workout, or to really, really hurt yourself and put yourself up, out for a long period of time. So yeah, do your warm ups. make sure you're sufficiently limber and thoroughly warmed up before you do any heavy resistance training. So that's it for this video, guys. I had planned to share some of the workout with you, but you'll have to wait till next time to see me getting my pump on. But I still hope that you found this video useful and uh, you can apply the warm up to some of your routines. Remember, it is important to warm up to some degree with any exercise that you do. And remember, guys, it's just advice that I'm putting out there to help someone. And if you do find it useful, I'd appreciate if you like the video. But if not, don't worry come along next time you might find something else more useful but the takeaway from today is make sure you do your warm-ups take it easy have a good weekend look after yourselves